this is chapter six, section six, trapezoids and kites. I feel bad for the trapezoids because we and kites because we spend so much time on parallelograms, quadrilaterals that are squares, rectangles, and rhombuses, and we kind of leave these poor guys unattended. So this is, we're going to give our 100% full attention to our crazy stepchildren, the trapezoid and kites, and we're going to make them feel special today. Who's in? Who's in it with me? Let's do this. Special day for trapezoids and kites. It's trapezoid kite day. Our learning objective is to verify and use properties of trapezoids and kites. So what I thought was really, really important is that we define trapezoids. So if you don't already have this picture on your paper, please put the picture of the trapezoid where you know the top and the bottom that are parallel. The sides that are parallel are bases, and the sides that are not parallel are legs. So this side... This is a base because it's parallel to the other side, and these guys are legs because they are not parallel to the opposite sides. An isosceles trapezoid has legs that are congruent. So the sides that aren't parallel are congruent on this isosceles trapezoid. Great. All right, so let's look at our theorems from the sections. Theorem 6, 19, 20, and 21. Let's get our highlighters out, which I have mine out already. If a quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid, then each pair of base angles is congruent. So if you look at... If it's an isosceles trapezoid, that says that the sides are congruent, but now we know that the angles are also congruent. 620 says if a quadrilateral is isosceles trapezoid, then its diagonals are congruent. So that is this picture here. So you look from BD is if we're isosceles, so we're congruent um, on our legs, then our diagonals are also congruent. So let's look how that applies. So if trapezoid TRAP is an isosceles trapezoid, check, it's base RA and TP, then angle T is congruent to angle P. And angle R is congruent to angle A. I promise I'm not making it up. Um, so make sure those congruent marks are on your figure. So T and P, R and A. Your isosceles trapezoid, then those angles are congruent. So let's take a look at trapezoid A, B, C, D. If it's an isosceles trapezoid, then A, C, this diagonal here, is congruent to... So the diagonal AC is going to be congruent to the diagonal BD. And if ABCD is an isosceles trapezoid and AB is 5 centimeters, then CD has to be also 5 centimeters. All right, so make sure your diagram has all these important components. And now we're on to 621, trapezoid mid segment theorem. Trapezoid mid segment theorem. This one's kind of important, so let's make this um, 
an even more awesome color. Trapezoid magnetic theorem. If a quadrilateral is a trapezoid, then and then the mid segment is parallel to the basis, and the length of the mid segment is half the sum of the lengths of the bases. Oh, that's kind of a lot, so let's break that down. The length of the mid segment, so from So if we look at MN, the length of the mid segment is half the sum of the length of the bases. So if I add RA plus TP and I cut it in half, I should get MN. That's what that is telling me. All right, so if it's a tra trapezoid with mid segment MN, and MN is parallel with the two lines TP and RA, then MN, our mid segment, is half the sum of the bases, so RA plus TP. So let's look at a problem where we're going to use these properties. Okay, so problem number two. A fan has 15 angles meeting at the center. What are the measures of the base angles of the congruent isosceles trapezoid in its second ring? So they did a little cutout for you. Don't be fooled by this nice little spiderweb design. It's, we're actually looking at the cutout. So circle the number of isosceles triangles in each wedge. So we're going to circle the number of isosceles triangles in each wedge. So if I'm an isosceles triangle, that's this guy right here. And there's another one. Where's the other one? Isosceles triangle is, we're looking at just triangles. The big one, right? Isosceles triangles in each wedge. Okay? So you guys see how there's two isosceles triangles in this wedge. And, hold on. Okay, so underline the number of isosceles trapezoids. So let's look and find the trapezoid. There's one right here. There is one right here. And I will tell you there is a third one, which where does anybody want to come up and highlight like our third one? The big one. All these guys right here. The two combined together make an isosceles trapezoid. Okay. So when we answer this question, there are two, oh, I disagree. I think there are three. I think there's two triangles and three. Circle the number of the isosceles triangles. I got, oh, no. Hold on, let's do the triangle one again. So there is this little guy on the top. There's the big one, and then there's the third one is including the second wedge. So I agree. There's I think there's three of both. Um, isosceles. I'm just double checking that it's isosceles because maybe that's why. So I disagree, but that's okay. I think there's three of both. Anywho. So if I want to find A, <coughs> I just take 360, because that's how many degrees are in a circle, 
and I divide by 15 because I have 15 angles meeting at the center. So that means this angle is 24. If I want to find B, we take 180 minus 24 and divide it by 2 because I have a triangle right here. This is 24. How many? If you have a triangle, what is the sum of the angles in a triangle? I'll give you a hint. It's right here. The sum of the angles is 180. And I already know we have 24 is accounted for. So whatever's left has to be for the B's. But how many B's do we have? Two. So that's where the divided by two comes from. So 180 minus 24 divided by 2 is 78. So that'll give us our B value. Our C value is going to be 180 minus whatever your B is because they are a linear pair. And linear pair are, what's the word for it? Linear pair is not congruent, they're supplementary. So supplementary means together they add up to 180. So in this case, I go 180 minus 78 is 102. And then we're almost done. So lastly, but not leastly, if I have a isosceles trapezoid, if you look at the diagram, Go right here. Then um, I know that my entire, we did this yesterday, our quadrilaterals, the interior of our quadrilateral adds up to 360. So this angle and this angle are going to add up to be 180. So 180 minus our C value is 78 and that's what we get for D. So the measures of the base angles of the isosceles trapezoid, the isosceles trapezoids are 102 and 78. All right, so here's problem number three. I have a little trapezoid here. The top is 10, the mid segment is 2x plus 11 and the bottom base is 8x minus 12. We need to justify each step. So mn equals 1 half. The sum of the bases is which theorem that we just talked about. Let's go ahead and look at your paper. Which theorem is it that where we can sum the bases and take 1 half? Yeah, it's a trapezoid mid-segment theorem. Woohoo! Okay, and when we substitute the actual values in, it's called substitution. Or I would take substitution. All right, when we simplify things, oh, yep, it's called simplify. And when we distribute this one half, into the parentheses, it's called the distributive property. Then we are going to add one to both sides. That's add one to each side. And then we are going to subtract 2x from both sides. And then we are going to divide by 2. So now we know that x is equal to 6. So we, we know x is equal to 6. Check. We got that done. We still have to answer what is mn. So we're going to take our 2x plus 11, and we're going to put in 6 for the x. Hold 
Only two x's from both sides. Because look at your paper. It says 2x plus 12 equals 4x. To get 12 that equals 2x, you would have to subtract 2x. So mn is equal to 2x plus 11. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 plus 11 is 23. All right, now on to kites. A kite is a quadrilateral um, where your diagonals are perpendicular. So check out the little perpendicular mark. And your, you have a pair of consecutive sides that are congruent. So in this case, it's like AB is congruent to AD. But they're right side by side. DC is congruent to BC side by side. So we're going to use that property here in this question. Quadrilateral KLM is a kite so that I know its diagonals are perpendicular. What are angle M? Um, what are the measure of angle 1, measure of angle 2, and the measure of angle 3? So if I were just to look at the triangle that houses angle 1, so this is K, call this um, D, D and N. If this is 36 degrees, angle D is perpendicular because I have a vertical angle. Vertical angles are congruent. So, Angle 1 is 90 degrees. Check. Angle 2, so let's draw this picture. This is 90, this is 3, this is 2. Oh, okay. Alright, so if you look at the two triangles, you look at K and M, and you look at K L M, you know that because it's a kite, that K L is congruent to K N. You know that K M is congruent to K M, and you know that because it's a kite, LM is congruent to NM. So by side, 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 triangle KLM is congruent to triangle KNM. And because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent, this angle 3 right here gets to be 36 degrees. So what does that leave us for angle 2? If I were just to draw this nice little picture, this is 90, this is 36, this is angle 2. The measure of angle 2 would be whatever 90 minus 36 is. That's good. So to summarize, a quadrilateral, all of these items are quadrilaterals. A kite is kind of its own offshoot. It has no pairs of parallel sides, but two pairs of congruent sides. A trapezoid has only one pair of parallel sides, and an isosceles trapezoid has the legs congruent. Two pairs of parallel sides are the parallelogram, which um, shoots off into two areas, the rectangle and the rhombus, and the two come back together to make a square.